Are you a Christian? Have you discovered the secret place? The place of fellowship. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. This is Faith Giants Fellowship Worldwide Online Activities. Join us daily for a time of refreshing and sweet fellowship with Jesus on our different social media platforms. You're blessed. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Once again, we are welcome to another Sunday, our Global Fellowship. And today we are going to be talking about um, the Holy Spirit empowering us to do things. I And it's going to be interactive, so everybody is going to contribute, everybody, everybody is going to be asking questions, and we'll be reading scriptures together. Praise God. So... Um, I, I keep hearing people say, I can't do this, or I can't do that, or there are probably some characters in me, or some sinful things I do that I cannot stop doing. It's not for you to stop doing them, it's for the Holy Spirit to empower you to stop doing them. So the first thing you're supposed to do is to do what? To ask the Holy Spirit, and also to believe what the scriptures had said concerning that. Praise the Lord. Can we see um, Philippians 4.13? Can we remember what the Bible says there? Philippians 4.13. Yeah, can somebody, can somebody get there for us? Because we're, we're just going to be picking out scriptures, looking at what they said, and discussing them. I can do all things. Exactly. I can do all things. 
through Christ to strength. So, how many things can you not do? Yeah, Nothing. So it means that you can do all things. So, as a child of God, if you're asked to tell somebody about God and you're saying, I can't do it. I'm shy. I don't know how to do it. That means that you're denying the power of God to get that thing done. I don't know if you understand. Praise the Lord. Can someone just tell us like an example of maybe something you remember in your lifetime that you had once said, I cannot do. And later you found yourself doing it and you were able to actually do it. I'm going to be calling names one by one if nobody is just giving us a suggestion as in to go suggestion. I should call names. Eh? Just remember something that once in your lifetime you said, ah, I cannot do that too. Then later they now brought you out and said, you just have to do it. church we were planning for a teenager service. Okay. That was when we went to a camp in. Remember we went to a... so um, our teacher's best pastor came to meet us and meet me and I was like I'm going to coordinate the service of some because I have this crowd something. Mm. It was like a hundred. Mm. She said she's not going to do that. That's and that is a pastor. Is a pastor. Mm. I must do it. As you just read my mind, whether I'm ready or not, I'm the one hand in my class Sunday. Mm. So I was just shaking throughout the night. Then before going to sleep, I prayed and said, God, help me tomorrow. Because they've already given me the order of service. Yeah. I said, God, tomorrow morning, just take over me. Because where I am like this, I can't do it anymore. Yeah. Then on Sunday morning, getting there, I was still shaking. But mm. as they finished the praise and worship, as I mm. handed the mic, that fear just went. Left, right? I just left. And I was standing there, I was doing it well. I was like, is it me that is doing this? <laughs> you were surprised at yourself. I believe that what happened was that the Holy Spirit took over you. That's why what we are discussing is empowered by the Spirit of God. So from what you had said now, he was asked, you're going to anchor service. And he's like, where is this coming from? I cannot anchor service, right? And at the end of the day, they said, you're the one to anchor it, whether you feel like or not. Your parents are pastors. And they gave him microphone. Now, there's something he said that I want us to highlight. He said, immediately he took the microphone. The fear left. So most times, the enemy comes and puts in front of us this huge fear that we cannot become who we choose to be in life we cannot you know advance we cannot do exploits we cannot get to this level we cannot get it's all a lie it's a farce he just wants it to be that you believe immediately you believe the devil it will begin to play out in your life but if they tell you that thing and you said no i'm going to give you an example with with someone he was not even a christian he was not even a Christian. But he even believed, not even knowing that as a child, as, uh, as, a, as a, apart from being a child of God, you have the Holy Spirit in you. As a human being, you carry the breath of God. Bible said he created us, then he breathed inside us. So the breath we carry today is what? The breath of God, right? So carry the breath of God. You have some creative abilities. You have some creative capacities. That is why you need to really like dream like God. I don't know if I'm communicating this morning. Praise the Lord. So I'm using someone that is not even a Christian in any way. Um, some of you might not know him, but he's called Fela. How many of us have heard about Fela? And Nicola Paul, Ransom, Kuti, and all of that. So it was once said that Fela went to... You know, probably, I think he should even be a native doctor because he cannot be a pastor he, that fella will go to, right? And fella got to this native doctor and the guy said, oh my God, you're going to be very popular. Fella turned to the person that took him to the native doctor and said, ah, this man is seeing very well though, he's seeing clearly. Do you understand? The guy that said to fella again, um, you're going to, to be popular, you know? People are going to know you and all of that. 
He said, the guy is seeing very well. He now said, ah, you will marry a lot of wives. He told to the person that took it. He said, that this guy really knows what he's doing. The, the thing he's seeing is very clear. His crystal ball is working. Then you know the next thing the man told Fela? He said, but you're going to die a poor man. Fela turned to his friend and said, it's like the man has gone blind though. It's like the thing is not working again. So even in the presence of the man, Fela decided not to believe that aspect. Now the question is, did Fela die a poor man? We all know he didn't die a poor man. Why? Because he, he didn't allow that fear to be planted in him. You see, fear is the direct opposite of faith. And faith comes to us by hearing. That's what the Bible says. And guess what? Fear also comes to us by hearing. So what are you hearing? And what do you choose to believe? Praise the Lord. Can we all say, I can do all things? I can, do all things. can we say it again? I can do all things. Can do all things. True Christ who strengthens me. Christ Praise the Lord. So let's read another scripture. Remember, we're just taking scriptures, highlighting it and checking. Oh, why can't we do this? And why can't Praise God. Is someone in Ephesians 5? Ephesians 5, 18 to 21. Let's look at that. Ephesians 5, 18 to 21. Ephesians 5, 18. Yeah. And do not be drunk with wine. Yeah. Which is discreted. Mm. But be filled with the Spirit. Speaking in one and another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting to one another in the Praise the Lord. Did you hear how he started? Do not be drunk in wine. Have you heard some people say to you, I can't stop drinking? Am I making sense? I can't stop smoking. I can't stop the kind of friends I'm keeping. They are bad company, quite all right. But really, I can't. And when they're in the midst of that, they are friends. They can't say anything about Jesus. So, in fact, you can't, so that you don't embarrass them. They actually get embarrassed by Jesus because of the kind of people that they are hanging out with. Now, the Bible now says that instead of being drunk in wine or being drunk in any character that does not glorify our Father in heaven, that we should be filled with what? What? Yeah, 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 we are all there. Let me hear one by one. Filled with the Spirit, yes? Singing. Singing psalms and hymns, yes. Spiritual songs. Spiritual songs. Making, melody in your heart. Making melody in your heart to the Lord. See the melody. Not any kind of melody. Because there are different kinds of melody. There are some music I hear people sing and dance to. I wonder what is the, the, the pushing force in dancing to such music. Because the music... If there is one I saw. I don't know any, if anybody saw it on Facebook. The person's song says, I am a cow. <laughs> you saw it? Uh -huh. And the person was singing and dancing, I am a cow. I am. Oh my God. You don't confess some things for yourself. How can you be singing and dancing to the fact that you're a cow? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So if he says singing and making melody, he said to the Lord. So what kind of melody are we supposed to make? It's just like the song we sang this morning. Who is like unto thee, O Lord? And you're singing, you're happy within yourself. Among their gods, who is like? Let the song that usually comes out of your mouth be songs that will glorify God. But before we get to that, we are trying to look at what characters have you once had or do you even have now? And you feel, I really cannot let go of this. I cannot overcome it. Some people prayerlessness, some people they don't even read the Bible, they only open their Bibles on Sunday. Some others maybe bad company, maybe smoking, maybe drinking, maybe something. What character? Or let me put it this way: what character do you see among your peers? Amen. And even when you talk to them about it, they are like, We can't, we just cannot stop doing this. Praise the Lord. Yeah, can somebody? He has contributed. Okay, contribute, Victor, yeah? Um, 
bad company. Okay. Like even when we're having a conversation in public or in private, he usually say bad word. Yeah. And I always get into color with some person. So most times I don't work with him. Okay. There is there is one thing Victor has just highlighted, I think that we should also pen that down. Bad words. Bad words are bad. There are some words you use in public already people are looking at you in a particular eye. Praise the Lord. So as a child of God, there are some things that must not, no matter how it's raining, no matter how everybody is using that word to express themselves, it must not come out of your mouth, especially the F words. There are also some signs, people don't even know the meaning, and they do it. You know, there is this one that they later found that, is it like something, one funny sign, one, one sign that is very strange. And it, 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 later it was found out, that it's even the sign of the devil. And uh, it's even uh, all this church of Satan people that do such signs. And it just comes, it begins to trend. That it is trending does not mean that you should part of it. Remember what the scripture said. Thou shall not join the multitude to do what? Evil. So you must not join the multitude to do evil. In fact, another scripture says that flee all appearances of evil. If it looks like evil. If you are viewing it and he wants to look as if this thing is evil, oh, just flee. Don't confirm if it's evil or not. So far as you are perceiving that it looks like, flee, first of all. There is something he said. He was talking about wrong companies, bad companies, correct? Am I, am I right? Okay, now, if he's talking about bad companies and we really want to look at it, the easiest way, because... I know that we are living in a generation whereby even if you don't want to be someone's friend, they force themselves on you. Especially if you're in the higher institution, they get called people, they come and meet you and you say, no, you don't want to join. You've, en you've signed up for problems. They will keep disturbing you, even beating you up on the road and trying to embarrass you everywhere you go. So the easiest way to, to cut yourself off from bad company is sharing the word of god and praying when you pray about the fact that's why um that song says that uh, um i will cast all my cares upon you i lay all of my burdens down at your feet and anytime that i don't know what to do i will cast all my cares upon you so there are some friends you want to leave they don't want to leave you and you don't know what to do so at that point remember that the arm of flesh shall fail so you just quickly move it over to the arm that cannot fail what um hymn did we read today we sang stand up stand up for jesus praise the lord so when you are amidst them and they begin to discuss uh, music that is somehow, you begin to discuss Christian music. When you are amidst them and they are talking something, you tell them that I've been actually reading one devotional and um, the scripture for today in that devotional, they actually asked us to memorize it. Can I just say it so that all of us can memorize it together? Don't be like... Exactly. What's wrong with this guy? What's when they see you on their own, they will they will just go and say, No, something is wrong with the guy. Let's not just be part of him. So at times you find out somebody was telling me that um, she was having insomnia. Insomnia means that the person cannot sleep in the night, the person is always awake. 
I say, wow. That is very simple. Curing insomnia is not drugs. So. He said, why? How? I said, simple. If you're awake, you begin to study scripture. Begin to pray. The devil and his agents will bring sleep on a plat. They will dash you sleep. They will say, can you just kindly sleep? You're making noise. You're trying to cut away people from our kingdom. And the woman said, oh, everything you put it in prayer way, this and that. So one of the nights she couldn't sleep and she was just thinking, she found her mind running, always going even to the things that are going bad in her life. And she now decided, let me just try out what Apostle was saying. And he now brought the Bible. He now started reading. He now started picking prayer points from the verse and started praying. Before you know it, she was yawning. She said, before you know it, in her kneeling position, it was morning. And she was like, what's going on? That she actually slept. I said, yes. The devil doesn't want you to pray. That even people that pray through the night, what they do is that they sleep in the day so that they can pray. If not, if you feel, no, it's, it's not, it's not a, a difficult and I usually have insomnia. I'll be awake to pray. It's a lie. If it's that time to pray, the devil will pioneer sleep, dash you, different types, in different gears. He'll even give you the one that when you're snoring, here, they'll be hearing you in Sokoto and all of that. But you just have to sleep. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Which of the scriptures did we read now? Which of them? Ephesians. Ephesians. Okay. Okay. All right. Let us see. Um, uh, uh, 618. Still in the same Ephesians. Ephesians 618. Oh, before we go to start 618, there's another, there's another habit that I wanted to talk about, which is... Um, Sagging. People even don't know the meaning of sagging. Do you know? Do you know what sagging means? Do you know the people that sag? Sagging started from prison in America. And it started from prison in America because eh? No, apart from no belt, there were lots of homosexuals. Yes. So when the new inmates come in, they 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 they, they, they want to have easy access to themselves. And so you have to like sag a bit. And later when they were all having health issues because of the practice of homosexualism, they even need to be like that because of the pain they are feeling. But you see, children will now see it and they will feel, oh my God, even the way he walks, oh, this is cool. He's walking because of pain. Are you having pain? Are you a homosexual? Are you in the prisons or did they just release you? What information are you passing to the public about yourself? Praise the Lord. Can we say it together again? I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. It means that there is no habit that you cannot stop. Praise the Lord. Okay? 618. Who is reading? Yeah. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Being watchful to this end. With all perseverance, perseverance. perseverance. Praise the Lord. Yes. I like this particular one. Praying always. Do you know that there are some people that from day to day they don't pray? The only time they pray is when there is a prayer meeting like this, or they go to church, or they have a prayer group. And they have a roster. And they know that that roster, they have to perform something in that place to go. Do you know that there are people like that? There are other people that whenever prayer begins, it is time to sleep. There are other people that, even when they go to church, for example, eh, the only time they keep staying inside the service is when praise and worship is going on. After praise and worship, time for prayer, what happens? They are off. Prayer is something you have to do. Prayer is something, it's not even something you're, you're, you do at your own time. No, 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 no. Prayer is what? Something that is a command. Prayer is a command. Praise the Lord. Now, can I just get some experiences that you have had with your prayer life? Uh, again, how many of us pray on our own, on a daily basis, on our own? Personally, personally. <laughs> Don't lie about it. I like the way you raise it. You just raise it that you don't have to wiping your face. 
That means that that prayer. <laughs> Amen. Okay, let's have your experiences in your prayer life. How you struggled or how before you now started being able to pray on your own without someone insisting you pray. Yes? It's your turn. Actually, I'm not with that prayer. Okay. Mm. But I realized that I don't miss I don't miss my mm. you see why I said that. Yeah. You have to keep in the love from the love of mm. So I took a book. I wrote all the prayer points. I was not like this one I'm writing prayer, but I might I might I might, I might going to you know, pray with this stuff. There's something, something I might say you can do it. Just open it. Mm. Where was that? Oh, they were all watching TV. I went to the I opened it up. I opened it up. I was like, oh, Lord, help me. Because mm. me, I don't even know. I'll just, I'll, like I said to myself, if I open it up, I'll just be saying the prayer over and over and over so I pray as I to my surprise, I actually paid everything. I was like, when I when I finished, I was, I said to myself, boy, is this me? <laughs> <laughs> I was the person I was afraid, but now I finished everything. Praise the Lord. I I actually you just gave a perfect example on this prayer matter. Um most times the most difficult thing in being a Christian is actually prayer. But the easiest way to go about prayer is what you did. Writing out your prayer points. For you to develop your prayer life, it has to be intentional. The first step you took is realizing that I will soon take my exams. I need prayer. That's an intentional decision. The next intentional thing you did was you wrote down prayer points. Do you understand? And of course, the devil was still fighting. You've written it down now, yeah, come and pray, right? But one day you took a bold step. That's another intentional thing you did. Entered into the room, closed the door. That closing of the door is like, <laughs> today, goodness, you're going to pray, whether you feel like it or not. That's like talking to yourself, talking to your spirit man, realizing that I have to... You see, the challenge a lot of people have in life is that they want to do something when it is easy for them to get it done. Praise the Lord. Not when they actually have to get those things done. They want to do it as an easy platform to get it done. So when it has to do with prayer, you have to be intentional about it. You have to prepare for it. You have to have time. You tell yourself, this time I have set it aside for prayer and I'm going to be having personal prayer moments and I'm going to be keeping to it. Writing out your prayer points is very beautiful. In fact, at times you can even write it as a letter to God and have a lot of letters you have written. I remember having a journal. And from the beginning of the journal to the end were letters I wrote to God. At times I just take it up and I just start reading it. Even when I'm in the car, I'm just reading it. Dear Heavenly Father, I'll just be reading, reading, reading. At the point, people felt, What's wrong? this girl is very weird. But it's not being weird. Look at it today. My prayer life is something that even some people want. Ah, when is prayer? Ah, God, apostle. And why? Because I started that way. And look at where it has gotten me to. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Got it. 